Hey everybody, welcome back. Happy Thursday. Today we are reading chapter seven and eight. And I know I've said this every day, but if somebody is just tuning in today, go back and watch day one, day two, day three of these videos so you can get caught up because this week we are reading a chapter book, Sunset of the Sabertooth. We are on chapter seven. So if you've missed the first six chapters, you'll need to go back and watch the other videos. Here we go. Yesterday we left off on kind of a cliffhanger. We weren't sure what was coming next. So make sure you listen to find out. The Sorcerer's Gift. The Sorcerer didn't speak. He stared through the eye holes of the owl mask. Oh, boys and girls, let me remind you of the last picture we saw. Remember, they were trapped in that hole and they had just seen the Sorcerer and they said they were seeing Peanut as well. I am not seeing Peanut but maybe you are. So that was where we left off. Okay, the sorcerer didn't speak. He stared through the eye holes of the owl mask. Help us, please, said Annie. The sorcerer threw a rope into the pit. Jack grabbed it. He wants to pull us up, said Annie. Jack looked up. The sorcerer was gone. Where did he go, Jack said. Tug on the rope, said Annie. Jack tugged. The rope tightened. It begun rising. I'll go first, said Annie cheerfully. Annie, this isn't a game, warned Jack. Don't worry, I'll be careful, said Annie. Jack gave her the rope. Okay, but hold on tight, he said. Annie held the rope with both hands. He pushed her feet against the side of the pit. She rose into the air with the rope. She kept pressing against the side of the pit until she got to the top. Jack saw the sorcerer re reappear and help Annie up. Then they moved out of the sight. Jack was puzzled. The sorcerer had used both hands to help Annie. So who held the other end of the rope? Wow, came Annie's voice. What's going on? Jack wondered. The sorcerer came back and threw the rope down again. Jack grabbed it and the rope started to rise. Jack held on tight. He started up. His hands burned. We have a visitor, boys and girls. He couldn't get enough of these stories. He started up. His hands burned. His arms felt as if they were sore. Being They were being pulled out of their sockets. But they kept his hold on the rope and his feet against the side of the pit. At the top, the sorcerer pulled Jack onto the snowy ground. Thanks, said Jack standing. The sorcerer was tall. He wore a long fur robe. Jack could see only his eyes through his owl mask. Hey, Annie called. Jack turned. Annie was sitting on a woolly mammoth. Squeak! Peanut was sitting on the mammoth's head. The mammoth looked like a giant elephant with shaggy red hair and long curved tusks. Boys and girls, if you've ever seen the movie Ice Age, the big animal, I can't remember what his name is, I'm sure you know, but the big animal that looks like an elephant with the brownish red fuzzy hair. That is a mammoth. So that's what Annie is riding on. I hope there's a picture. I'm not sure. The other end of the rope was tied around the mammoth's huge neck. Lulu pulled us up, said Annie. Lulu, said Jack. Don't you think she looks like a Lulu, said Annie. Oh, brother, said Jack. He walked up to the mammoth. Hey, mammoth starts with M, said Annie. Maybe Lulu's the special thing. I don't think so, said Jack. The great creature knelt down, just like a circus elephant. Whoa, said Annie. She clutched the mammoth's ears to keep from falling off. The sorcerer helped Jack climb onto the mammoth. Thanks, said Jack. Then the sorcerer reached into a pouch. He pulled out a smooth white bone and handed it to Jack. The bone was hollow. It had four holes along one side and two on the other. And here is the picture and you can see what the sorcerer is giving to Jack. So there's the mammoth Lulu, the sorcerer, the gift, and Jack and Annie. Oh man, I think it's his flute, said Jack. The book said they make flutes from mammoth bones. Jack tried to give the flute back to the sorcerer. Nice, he said politely. But the sorcerer held up his hand again. He wants you to keep the mammoth bone, said Annie. 
Mammoth bone, said Jack. Hey, maybe it's the third thing. Do you know Morgan? Jack looked at the sorcerer and he asked that question. The sorcerer did not answer, but his eyes sparkled with kindness. He turned away from Jack and untied the mammoth's rope. Then he whispered in the ear of the giant woolly creature. When the mammoth stood up, Jack gripped Annie's coat to keep from falling off. He felt miles above the ground. He nestled behind Annie in the, de in the dip between the mammoth's head and huge curved back. The mammoth took slow, plodding steps across the snow, then picked up speed. Where are we going, said Jack, as they bumped up and down. To the treehouse, said Annie. How does, she, how does he know where it is, said Jack. She just knows, said Annie. Jack looked back. The sorcerer was standing in the snow watching them. But at that moment, the clouds in the sky parted and the sun came out. Jack was blinded by sunlight on the snow. He squinted to see, but the sorcerer had vanished. Chapter 8, The Great Parade. A huge mammoth walked across the open plain. Look, said Annie. He pointed to a herd of elk in the distance. They had great wide antlers. There, said Jack, as a herd of reindeer came into view. They pranced gracefully across the snow. Then a woolly rhino joined them on the open plain. Then a bison. The elk, reindeer, rhino, and bison moved along with them at a distance. They seemed to be escorting Jack and Annie back to the treehouse. The snow sparkled with sunlight. This is a great parade, Jack thought. Fantastic. They were getting closer and closer to the grove of tall trees. I told you, said Annie. Lulu's taking us home. But just then the mammoth let out a cry. All the other animals bounded off. Peanut started to squeak. Jack looked around. Behind them, the saber tooth was slinking across the snow. The woolly mammoth roared and plunged forward. Jack and Annie nearly fell off. Jack clutched Annie tightly. She and Peanut clutched the mammoth's shaggy, shaggy hair. The mammoth thundered wildly over the ground. Ah! Jack and Annie yelled. The mammoth charged to the grove of trees, but the tiger had circled around. He stood between the tallest tree and the mammoth. They were trapped. The saber tooth began moving slowly towards the mammoth. The woolly mammoth roared fiercely. But Jack knew a saber tooth could kill any creature, including a mammoth. The tiger's huge head was down. His burning eyes were fixed on the mammoth. His white long fangs glinted in the sunlight. Now, boys and girls, while you look at the picture, think about it said the it said his burning eyes, the tiger's burning eyes. Do you think his eyes were on fire? I don't think so. Think about what you think the tiger's burning eyes meant. And here's the picture. You can see here's the woolly mammoth and Jack and Annie. And then over here is the saber tooth with his burning eyes. Okay, let's keep going. Oh, that actually was the last page. Tune in tomorrow, boys and girls, for chapter 9 and 10. That will be the end of our story. Chapter 9, Master of the Animals. And chapter 10, This Age. So it should be good. Tomorrow is the last day of our book for the chapter book. And... Who knows, next week maybe we'll have another one or maybe we will go back to stories. I'm not too sure yet. But anyways, I've loved getting to read to all you guys and I hope you're enjoying and having some fun at home. And I miss you all so much. Love you. Bye.